What did you say his name was? James Dark. I mean, he's a writer. I've never heard of him myself, but I'm told that he writes crime fiction. And he wants to come here for yes. research. For some new book he's writing. Well, what's it about? I don't have all the details, Sergeant. All I know is he's arriving tomorrow morning and the inspector has asked us to make him feel welcome. So I've got a celebrity coming to town. Celebrity wanker that none of us have heard of. Well, at least there'll be someone interesting around. Thank you. How long's he staying for? I don't know. A couple of days. Well, that's long enough if he's a pain in the backside. I've been assured that he won't be a nuisance, and the inspector is a big fan of Mr. Dark's work. Well, if you're the writer, would you take that as an insult or a compliment? Very funny. Just make him feel welcome, will you? No, 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 no. I reckon a movie is heaps scarier than a book. You get to see it all happening. Yeah, every bloody blow with the cleaver. Yeah, the blood and the guts, that sort of stuff. Yeah, but a movie can't go inside the minds of the characters the way a book can. What do you mean? Well, that's where the really creepy stuff goes on. Speak for yourself. <laughs> Mrs. Johnson, this is Constable Lawson, Constable Parrish. We spoke earlier about an intruder. He's in there. I went over and shouted to him, but he didn't come out. Well, who lives there? Nobody. It's been empty for the last six months. Did you get a good look at the bloke? No. Nah. But the kids did. Jason, Tracy, come here a minute. Mm. Tell the police officers about the man that you saw. He was looking around, then he saw me and Tracy watching him. Did he say anything to you? Nah, just looked at us. He looked at you. Was he friendly? Did he smile or wave or something? Nah, just looked at us, then went inside. Now, I'm Thomas 208 to VKC. Request the usuals on a cream citron. Red Joe Charlie Alpha X Ray 846. Hey, hang on a second. Mount Thomas Police, anyone there? Dog. Oh, Hello? Anyone in here? Hello? Excuse me, sir. Do you have any business in here? Think I said I'm out Thomas 208. Yours is a 74 Citroen sedan cream. Register to a James Dark, 56 Wayland Street, Collingwood. So you're James Dark? Mr. Dark wants to set his next book in a small country town. That's why he's keen to get a feel for the place. Is that why you're trespassing on private property? Sorry if I caused any trouble, but I saw the house from the road and it looked so sad, so desolate. It's how he imagines the house in the book. It's going to be a murder mystery. I see. I was asking Constable Parrish about the history of the place. I couldn't tell him much, but I said you'd know. Senior Sergeant Croydon has lived in the area nearly his whole life. So, who used to live there? A bloke named Taz Paisley he died a little while back. Will the house be sold? I don't know. I presume he left it to his wife, but then she might well be dead herself. No one knows. She left him and the town about 25 years ago. Why'd she leave him? Was it another man? Oh, nothing like that. One of their children died. Yeah. That could break up a family. So he's not a wanker? Uh, no, but he's a bit weird. You know, he's kind of withdrawn. Oh, you mean like an introvert? Yeah, yeah, that's the word. He's writing about Mount Thomas. Yeah, yeah, I told him he should set it in a cop shop. Man by an aging detective called PJ. Except give it a twist, make him gay. And then there's Jack. Uh, he's ruggedly handsome, quiet and determined. He'll be the real hero of the show. Yes, yes, and of course Jack will get the girl. Oh, PJ will get the boy. So, where are you staying while you're here? Uh, just up the road at the Imperial. Oh, well, you'd be well looked after. Yeah, I'd better go and sort things out. Again, I'm sorry if I caused you any trouble. No, no trouble at all. He was asking a lot of questions. Well, what about? 
Not the old Paisley house. Well, if he's a writer, he's got to ask questions, find out all the good stories. Yeah, well, the Paisley family is a sad story, not a good one. But it does sound interesting. I might duck down the library later, see if they get a copy of his book. What for? Well, if this guy's hanging around for the next couple of days, I'd like to find out where he's coming from. Mate, you're absolutely right. Everybody's got a story. I mean, take my life. Change a few names to protect the innocent, you can put it straight on the bestseller list. The problem is, there's people involved who wouldn't want their part in things to come out. You know what I mean? No, it's like Mr. Dark, dark settled in. Yeah. Yeah. But Fascinating bloke, isn't he? I can't Fascinating. Yeah, well, you know, it's interesting. He's got eyes that see right into you. I've seen a glass of grog well enough. Yeah, well, he's not alone there, is he? The way Moe's been getting stuck into it ever since Leela passed. Sign again, please. No worries. So, uh, this novel that you're writing, when will it be on the shelves? Uh, not for a while yet. Yep. I'm still gathering my ideas. And, uh, will there be room for a public in there somewhere? You know, with, uh, red hair. Pulls a beer like she was born to it. <laughs> you're from Mount Thompson. Born in a thunderstorm in this very bar, and that's no story. So you've lived here all your life? Yeah. Do you remember a uh, Paisley family? Sure do. What about them? No, it's just I was talking to Merv over there, and he said the child was murdered. Is that true? There was some conjecture at the time, yeah. Conjecture? Tom, for God's sake, it was the talk of the town. Everybody reckoned it was the kid's brother who did it. Your brother? Yeah, Daryl Paisley. He was only six years old at the time, I think. Was he charged? Well, they said it was an accident, didn't they? That was the finding, yes. But was that the truth? Look, it was so long ago, I doubt that it matters now. Thanks. Deadly fascination. Read it last night. All of it? Yeah, I stayed up pretty late. So what's it about? It's about a guy who's fascinated with murder. Investigating murder? No, fascinated with committing murder. He can't stop killing, right? And the sick part is, he only kills kids. Is that Dark's book? Yeah. Deadly fascination. It is so gruesome, boss. Yeah, but you couldn't put it down, could you? Look, if the people who wrote this weirdo stuff had to deal with the real world like we do, they'd think twice about catering for their sicko readers. Not everyone likes little women, Sarge. Uh, I do. Morning. Oh, you look shocking. Had a big night or something, Benny? Uh, the kids decided to ring me late last night. They haven't got the head around the time difference thing yet. How are they like in Perth? They love it. They've got a big house, big pool. Well, that's something. Boss, yeah. that was Eunice Johnson. Her granddaughter's gone missing down by the river. She's been looking for the last half an hour and can't find right, her. Where's Eunice now? Uh, she was calling from Charlie Day's place, but she said she'd meet us at Pew's Crossing. Right, call the D24, get them to notify search and rescue. Right. Then uh, organise a group of local volunteers to meet at the Imperial. Jones, then come with Any sign? No. I'm scared she's fallen in the river. She can't swim, Tom. Fred Anderson's got a boat in that board. We've got them the use for you. Sure. Where was she when you last saw her? Here, right here. Look, I'm sure she'll be all right. What, what was she doing? Well, she helped me put the blanket down. Uh, I got the picnic stuff out, and uh, Jason was setting up a hand line, and he got the hook caught in his jumper. Uh, just for that one minute, no, I wasn't I'm watching sure her. She was there, then gone. She's going to be all right. We've got searchers on the way. There are no pews crossing. Back's onto the National Park, just here. Yeah, just hope she wandered into the bush and not the river. So we need to search the entire area. We can't leave anything to chance. You guys all right for chance? You look like you could do with a coffee or two. Yeah. Okay, you three boats go together. You can go and What's going on? Oh, there's a little girl gone missing. They're worried she might have drowned. Who is she? Tracy. Tracy Johnson. She's only four. Tracy. Yeah. You think the family would have suffered enough if parents died in a car crash last year? Coming, we need all the help we can get. Uh, I can't. Why not? Come on, Merv, let's keep moving, eh? Well, I think you should come. I'm sorry, I can't. Well, we're going to need to search the banks on both sides really thoroughly. With any luck, she's been able to grab a branch or a tree root or something. Also, we're going to need a, a party to go back through the bush and link up with Charlie. Sure. I'll organise that. Okay, you two head up that way. Uh, no, not yet. The grandmother? Uh, yeah, and the brother, they'd be upset. Well, it's possible she just got lost and went home. No, no, she'd have to cross the river for that. No, boss, look, there's a footbridge here. It's worth a try. Yes, it's well worth a try. Why don't you just take the four-wheel drive and go and have a look? Mm -hmm. right, right, where do you need us? Well, why don't you and Merv and a few volunteers go yeah. back to the main bridge and search okay. the bush on the way? Great. OK, okay. guys, hear that?
Tracy? Tracy? Tracy! 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 Go ahead, 509. Yeah, we're at the house. There's no sign of Tracy. Where are you? Uh, where about a okay, cave past Reddy's place? Heading your way. Anything? Not out yet. Tracy? Go ahead, 260. PJ, we've just had a call. Tracy's been found, returned to base. Can I have a quick word? Uh, it's about Mr. Dark. Something is just not right about him. Why is that? I just think it is weird that he was the one to find Tracy's body. And when I saw him at the pub, he didn't want to be part of the search. He was fully against it. So he must have changed his mind. Yeah, and it's a bit of a strange coincidence that he's hanging around the Johnson place the day before Tracy goes missing. You suspect Dark of foul play? I don't know, but something is not right. Part of me thinks that I've been warped by this book. It, it's all about kids being killed. There's even a bit where the murderer holds a baby's head underwater while it drowns. I'd like to have another talk to him. I'll be here soon. I've asked him to come in this morning and give his statement. Great. Well, if it's all right with you, um, I'd like to be the one to take that. Okay, tell us what happened when you uh, got down to the river. Oh, I drove to a place called Parry's Lane and walked from there. Mm -hmm. It was easy at first, then the bush got a bit thicker. I even lost sight of the river a couple of times. After a while, I came to Lovett's Pool. She must have been caught under a ledge of rock or a dead branch, and then the river swung her free. I saw her face under the water. Pale. And then the river rolled her under again into deep water. I didn't stop to think. I just waded in and pulled her out. What happened then? Well, I heard other voices crying out, so I just yelled out that I'd found her, and before I knew it, people were coming from everywhere. Okay, let's go back to this morning when I saw you at the pub. At that point, you weren't at all keen to join the search. No. In fact, you were dead against it. That's right. I wasn't too, feeling too well, a bit hungover. What's this got to do with anything? I'm just curious to know why you changed your mind. Well, I had some coffee, something to eat. I started to feel a bit better and I started thinking, I mean, the whole reason I came here was to explore life in a small country town. It suddenly seemed wrong not to get involved. 
So I asked Chris for a map and found my way down to the river. Yeah, but when you got there, you didn't report to anyone. You just went off on your own. That's right. Why did you do that? Well, I guess I just wanted to observe rather than be a part of things. I know his story sounds legit, boss, but I still reckon he's hiding something. Yeah, you might be right. According to your interview, he says he found Tracy at Lovett's pool. Yeah? Only a handful of locals would know it as that. Would it be on the map? I doubt it. So how would Dark know? Well, it's possible that Chris mentioned it, I suppose. But why would she? Sorry to interrupt. Eunice Johnson's here to see you, boss. No, shot through. Look, I'll give Chris a call, see if she can help us out. Let me know what she said. Sure. Eunice, come on in. Thanks, Lawson. Take a seat. Words are just... I'm so sorry about Tracy. Thank you, Tom. I know you mean that. Can I get you a cup of tea? No. Well, how can I help you? Uh, I spoke to Mr Gilchrist at the funeral home and he said Tracy has to stay at the mortuary until her body's released by the coroner. I don't understand. Well, Dr Carter or one of the other pathologists will have to conduct an autopsy. It's routine in these matters. But what do they do? Well, it depends. Will they open her up? If it's necessary to establish the exact cause of death, I know it's a horrible thought, but there needs to be legal closure. It'll be done as quickly and discreetly as possible. I'm sorry, but I can't bear the thought of my little girl being chopped up. To have her treated like an object by people who don't even know her. I really don't want that happening. Can't I stop it? Well, you can object to the autopsy. You'd need to call the coroner. Is that what you want to do? Yeah, I, I don't want to cause problems, but I can't allow that to happen. Thank you, Tom. Boss, I just spoke to Chris. She said she hasn't thought of Lovett's pool for years, let alone mention it to anyone. And I also checked the map, and it's definitely not marked. Ben, at the river, when you first came across dark, did anybody mention Lovett's pool? No, not that I heard. Everyone was being pretty quiet. Yeah. And he was by himself, wasn't he? Yeah, we were up on the cliffs overlooking the pool, and he was down in the reeds by himself. Uh, Boss, there's nobody else around. I think there's something else you should look at. In the morning sun, the red clay cliffs glowed like fire. A moorhen shrieked in the reeds. An ancient giant, a river red gum of indeterminate age, threw its protective arms across the bluestone cobbles that marked the ford. The old road to the capital, so long disused, none could remember its name. Uh, Pew's Crossing? Yeah, maybe. It sounds exactly like where I was today. What do you reckon, boss? Dark's been here before, hasn't he? I'm beginning to think he might have lived here. Found me. Oh, well, when you were at the pub, I thought I might find you here. You're not really James Dark, are you? Legally, I am. Yes, but your real name's Daryl Paisley, isn't it? My sergeant read your book. She recognised your description of our river. Love its pool. It used to be a popular swimming spot when you were a kid. That's how you knew the name, isn't it? We used to go swimming there. When the family was whole. Things were always floating down from upstream, getting caught in the rocks. That's why I thought the girl might be there. You were right. Strange holding that little body. Handing it over to Eunice. I noticed the way you looked at Eunice. Well, I was waiting for her to recognise me. <laughs> Come on, you're six years old the last time she saw you. She was like an aunt to me. Like part of the family. I'm sure she knew who I was. But maybe I'm wrong. So what's brought you back after all this time? The mother's dead, the father's dead. I'm the only child living. This is my house now. You're gonna live here? I want the truth about the past. Sort things out up here. So that's why you've been asking all these questions about your family? I need to know what happened to my brother. I need to know whether I killed him or not. You can't remember? I think I can, but the... Uh, the whispers trick me. Whispers? A lifetime of whispers and suspicion, people talking. 
My mother and me alone with the memories wherever we went. No friends. My father drank himself to death out here, alone, because of what happened here, in this house. Imagine never knowing. Never knowing the truth. You were a constable then. I was six years old. Don't you want to know the answers as much as I do? I remember taking a call from the Paisley place. Their baby boy, about eight months old, had just died. Sergeant Rice did the investigation. He decided that the little one had been dropped when the mother tripped over in the kitchen. Accidental death. He decided. He didn't believe that. Sergeant Rice and Taz Paisley were old drinking mates. So it was covered up? I don't know. But it didn't take long before the whispers started. Before you knew it, word got round that Daryl had hit his little brother with a hammer, killed him in a fit of temper. And he doesn't remember if he did it or not? He was very young. Now he's back and another child is dead. Only this one lived next door. It is a strange coincidence. That Johnson kid did say Dark was hanging around looking at him. Yeah. Where was this? Yesterday when we were called out there. So Dark knew that there were kids around? Definitely. Now come on, people. Why would Dark kill Tracy Johnson? There's no reason. Well, some people don't need a reason. Just read Deadly Fascination. I mean, the, the killer does it because he can. That is a work of fiction, sir. Yeah, and the author might have killed his own brother. I mean, maybe he killed but Tracy as well. There is no proof. We don't know. All I'm saying is, let's check him out. Find out where Dark was when Tracy went missing. Can't do any harm. Before you two get too carried away, come with me. Daryl Paisley was the victim of gossip as a six-year-old kid. I don't intend that to happen to him again without hard evidence. Well, then let us take a closer look at him, boss. On what grounds, Sergeant? Strange coincidence? It's not enough, I'm afraid. Doc Carter just called. She's found a nasty head wound on Tracy Johnson. It looks fairly clean. Do you know what caused it? No, we have to wait for an autopsy. Well, if the wound is clean, it's unlikely she sustained it in the river. Which would mean she was hit before she fell in the water. Hang on, hang on. Somebody's going to need to talk to Mrs Johnson. She doesn't want an autopsy to go ahead. But if there's suggestion of foul play... I know that, Sergeant. The child needs to be examined and Eunice needs to be told. I'm sorry, Mrs Johnson, but Senior Sergeant Croydon will confirm everything I've just told you. But I spoke to the coroner in St. David's and he said that I was within my rights to lodge an objection. You are perfectly within your rights. But sometimes the weight of evidence is such that the coroner can override an objection. Jason, why don't you take Brocky inside and give him something to eat? Uh, excuse me. Now, what sort of evidence are we talking about? Well, uh, Dr. Carter has done a preliminary examination, as I explained. Yeah, so what has she found? It seems Tracy might have hit her head. And just for that, you want to let those people cut her up? No, an autopsy is needed to determine the exact cause of death. So what are you saying? You think she could have died by some other means? We don't know. You think somebody could have hurt her on purpose? We have to consider every option. What are you doing? The last time I was here, there was something hidden under a blanket. The same blanket was drying on the line. All this earth has been disturbed. Puppy. Well, I don't know what all the fuss is about. No, it's just a little unusual that you buried the pup in the shed and mm. well, not in the yard under a tree. I wanted to keep it from the kids. I was backing out the car before we left at nine o'clock and I hit the pup. Jason and Trace didn't see it and I didn't want to spoil their day, so I hid it in a blanket and put it in the shed. I only just buried it. And you bought another puppy already? Oh, no, I didn't buy it. Neighbour's bitch had a litter. I told Jason that the first puppy had gone with Tracy and he could have a new one. Why, why? Well, thanks, Mr Johnson. I understand this is a very difficult time for you. Yes. Yeah. A dead puppy. You think there's a connection? Could be. It's just strange a puppy gets killed hours before a girl goes missing. Everything about this is strange, boss. Anything back from the pathologist? Ah, uh, yes. The autopsy's first thing in the morning. I think they'd hurry it through. We just have to be patient. I'll see you tomorrow. See ya. See ya.
I've read your book. I know what a sick, twisted pervert you are. I don't know what you're talking about. You Freak killed it, your own brother, then wrote about it for money. Now, what sort of a human uh, being would do that? Come with me to the parlor, that? unless all right. I'd rather go. I don't need your help. Help? You need help, all right. Merv. What did you do Merv. to that Johnson kid? Merv. What did you do, eh? Hey? Kid, everybody. Come on, Murphy was six years old. Yeah, and in America, kids that age take guns to school and blow their this class, mate. This is not America. I don't want mate, this gossip. Good people make a town worth living in. And why should good people die when bastards like that come back to haunt us? It's it's, it's not right. It's just not right. Leela lived a good, long life. I'm as sorry as you are, she's gone, but... pointing the finger and creating scapegoats isn't gonna bring her back. Come on, I reckon you've had enough for one day. Yeah. You're right to get home? Yeah, I can make it. You all right? I need to talk to you. Have you read my book? No, I haven't. No, you should. Maybe then you'll understand what I've had to live through since I was a child. There are dark places. If a child lives there long enough, the child gets drawn to darkness. It's all in the book. What are you trying to tell me? People know who I am now. I can't hide anymore. I could easily run away, but I've done that for long enough. I want the truth. Well, I'm afraid I can't help you. I don't know anything. You knew there were lies around that case. You knew, but you didn't act, did you? I wasn't allowed to act. Then do it now. How? Apart from you, everybody involved with the case is dead. There must be something. Some file, some record. Uh, all gone. There must be something. Look, the inquest brief would have been destroyed years and years ago. Can you say that for sure? No, no, I can't. Then you've got to find out. Daryl, there might be a very good reason why a police sergeant in a small country town would want to cover up something like that. Now, are you sure you want the truth? Autopsy result on Tracy Johnson. No river water was found in her lungs, which means she must have been dead before she went in. And the wound to her head? It was caused by a hard blood object. That was the blow that killed her. Contacted homicide? Yeah, they're on their way. We've sent Jack and Joe down to secure the scene down at the river and find any witnesses who were there yesterday. The homicide have asked me to conduct prelim inquiries. Right. Well, this morning I went to visit Sergeant Rice's widow. This was in a box in his garage. 1975 inquest brief into the death of the Paisley baby. According to the mother's statement, Daryl did kill his little brother. Violent blow to the head and the baby died an hour later. Uh, her statement's backed up by Eunice Johnson, whose statement is also in there. Mrs Johnson? What, what's she got to do with it? She was the first person Mrs Paisley called after the baby died. So this Sergeant Rise, he, he did cover it up? Apparently. Maybe to protect his friend Taz, maybe to protect Daryl, we'll never know. But Paisley did kill his brother. And Tracy Johnson died in a similar way. Hmm, I think we haven't need to have a word with Mr Paisley. Got some answers. We owe him a few answers as well. So it's true. I killed my brother. Why can't I remember that? Well, perhaps your memory just blocked it out. Yeah, maybe. I'm sorry, but we do need to ask you some questions about your movements yesterday morning. What for? It's been confirmed that Tracy Johnson didn't drown. Oh, right. And you think I had something to do with no, that? No, I'm not saying that. I'm just saying, well, we need to know where you were between 8 and 9 o'clock yesterday morning. Well, I was in my bed in my hotel room. Can anyone confirm that? Well, how could they? I was on my own. So when I saw you in the bar, that was the first time you'd come out of your room? Yes. Look, maybe I can't remember doing this. 
But I remember where I was yesterday morning, and I had nothing to do with the death of that little girl. Well, we spoke to Chris, and in fact, we spoke to all the guests who have been staying there. Nobody saw Dark leave his room before 10 a.m. yesterday morning. Well, all right, well, what about witnesses down by the river? Not a soul. No one was there at the time. You'd better take a run out to Ridgeway, let Eunice Johnson know what's going on. So it's true she was murdered? I'm very sorry. How did it happen? Oh, she was struck on the head. Uh, we we're assuming that she was kidnapped from the picnic spot. Murdered and thrown in the river. Do they know who did it? No. No, not yet. Did you see anyone when you went down the river yesterday? See anyone lurking around the picnic ground? No, it was empty. Jason, love is too young for that. Anyone hanging around here at all? No, not that day. Well, there was the bloke next door, but that was the day before. You mean Mr. Dark? Mr. Darrell Paisley. Have you spoken to Mr. Paisley? No. I saw him for the first time at the river when he found Tracy. All right, that's all for now. Now, if you do think of anything, will you um, give us a call? Yeah, all right. Hold up. I'll give you a hand. Has, uh, has been in the car since yesterday? Yes. There's nothing in here. Mrs. Johnson, do you understand the nature of this interview? Yes, but I don't understand why you're asking me questions, Detective Hashem. Mrs. Johnson, did you take a picnic camper to the river the morning that Tracy died? Yes. What did you put in it? Sandwiches, some cool drink. Does this really matter? Did you eat any of the food or drink anything at the river that morning? No. So, what happened to it? I took it out when I got home. You took out the food, you emptied the thermos, but you left the picnic hamper in the wagon. <laughs> I'm sorry, Mrs. Johnson, that doesn't make sense to me. You know what I think happened? You took an empty picnic camper to the river that morning. Why would I do that? Because you needed an explanation of why you drove to the river. The picnic was just a cover. No. Tracy didn't go missing at the river that morning, did she? She was already dead before you got there. That's the real reason you didn't want us to do an autopsy, because we'd find out. Homicide will be here in a matter of hours, Mrs. Johnson. They're going to have to inspect your vehicle, inspect your farm. There's no point keeping quiet, Eunice. Tell us now what happened. She, she was playing with the puppy behind the car and I was backing up. The puppy ran under the wheels. I heard Tr Tracy scream. She must have run to try to save it and I panicked and I pushed on the accelerator instead of the brake. The tow bar hit her. So if it was just an accident, Eunice, why didn't you say so? I was scared. I thought if people found out the truth, they'd say I was negligent, not fit to care for children. I thought they'd take Jason from me. You were so scared, you were prepared to push the blame onto Daryl Paisley, an innocent man. Yes. When's Nana coming out? Oh, she won't be too long now. I really love this little bloke, don't you? You don't want to squeeze him too hard, though. You hurt him. It isn't me who hurts him. It was Tracy who hurts him. 
You mean your other puppy? What did she do to me? Did she hit him? She never hit him, and I never hit her. What about your other puppy, Jason? Would you like to tell us what happened to him? You said that Tracy heard him. Is that right? What did she do? She knocked him. With a hand? What'd she smack him with? A, a spade. How big was this spade? Not very. Did it make you angry when she did this? I told her she was bad. What did she say? She was laughing. She wouldn't stop. Did you hear that? It's important that you tell us the truth, Jason. She was hitting the other puppy. Did you hit her? He told it was only an accident. He's making it up. And why would he do that? Because he's a little boy. He doesn't know what he's saying. I think you're the one that's lying, Mrs. Johnson. I told you what happened. I killed Tracy and the puppy with my car. Well, Jason said that Tracy killed the puppy with a spade. He's wrong. Well, we can find the spade. It'll be examined for evidence. You won't find any evidence. We'll find something. I don't care if you do. I killed that puppy and I killed my granddaughter. That's all there is to it. Well, she seems very determined to take the blame. Why is she doing it? Protect the boy. Yeah, but he don't want to get a rap over the knuckles. She's looking at a charge of manslaughter. I agree, I don't know. It's not logical. I don't think logic's got much to do with it. There must be some reason she's punishing herself. Maybe she feels guilty because she wasn't watching the kids closely enough. Maybe. Let me talk to her alone. This is off the record, Eunice. He's still a policeman. Yes, but this is just between you and me, I promise. Tell me what happened. Was Jason responsible for Tracy's death? Then why won't you say that? What do you think? Everyone knowing? Everyone talking? You saw how that affected Daryl Paisley. I won't let that happen to Jason. So surely it's better for Jason if we bring this out into the open. He was in my care. They both were. But hiding things just makes matters worse. He's a child. If the truth comes out, he can be counselled, helped. He's going to need help. Do you honestly believe he's not going to remember what he's done? Because I ruined one child's life with my lies, and maybe, just maybe, I can save Jason by doing the same thing. This other child you're talking about, Daryl Paisley. I have to pay for what I did to him, Tom. What did you do to him, Eunice? You owe him the truth. I read the inquest brief. It said I killed my brother. That's not true. But I saw the statements from my mother, from you. The statements were lies. You didn't kill your brother. Your mother did. I don't believe that. She couldn't do it. It's true. No. She wasn't well after the baby was born. Wasn't coping. And your father didn't help drinking like that. And on that day, you were shouting at the baby because he'd knocked down the blocks you'd stacked up. You started crying. Then you slapped your brother. 
and he started screaming and your mother yelled at you to get out and you were shouting and crying that it wasn't fair and the baby wouldn't stop crying just cried and cried and your poor mother was so distressed there were so many things piling in on top of us she threw the baby down and he hit his head on the toy truck on the floor it was soon after that that she called me well, she was so distressed I was the one that told her that she'd go to jail unless she said it was you and so that was our story and Sergeant Rice believed us but he thought to protect the family it would be better to say that your brother was killed in an accident but everyone believed that lie. My mother let me live that lie. We only did it so that your mum wouldn't have to go to jail. Try to understand, please. We didn't know that the whisperings and the rumours would go on. All these years. I'm so sorry. Sorry. I'm so sorry. It's getting a bit worried. I thought you might have left town. Not yet. Got to fix things up. Put the house on the market. I thought I might paint it white. What do you think? Yeah, 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 sounds good. You got a bit of rubbish to get rid of? Yeah. And this will burn nicely. It's a new novel by James Dark. Other stories to write. say his name was? James Dark. Dang it, he's a writer. I've never heard of him myself, but I'm told that he writes crime fiction. And he wants to come here for yes. research. For some new book he's writing. Well, what's it about? I don't have all the details, Sergeant. All I know is he's arriving tomorrow morning and the inspector has asked us to make him feel welcome. So I've got a celebrity coming to town. Celebrity wanker? That none of us have heard of. Well, at least there'll be someone interesting around. Thank you. How long's he staying for? I don't know. A couple of days. Oh, that's long enough if he's a pain in the backside. I've been assured that he won't be a nuisance, and the inspector is a big fan of Mr. Dark's work. Well, if you're the writer, would you take that as an insult or a compliment? Very funny. Just make him feel welcome, will you? No, 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 no. no. I reckon a movie is heaps scarier than a book. You get to see it all happening. Yeah, every bloody blow with the cleaver. Yeah, the blood and the guts, that sort of stuff. Yeah, but a movie can't go inside the minds of the characters the way a book can. What do you mean? Well, that's where the really creepy stuff goes on. Speak for yourself. <laughs> Mrs. Johnson. This is Constable Lawson, Constable Parrish. We spoke earlier about an intruder. He's in there. I went over and shouted to him, but he didn't come out. Well, who lives there? Nobody. It's been empty for the last six months. Did you get a good look at the bloke? No. Nah. But the kids did. Jason, Tracy, come here a minute. Mm. Tell the police officers about the man that you saw. He was looking around. Then he saw me and Tracy watching him. Did he say anything to you? Nah, just looked at us. He looked at you. Was he friendly? Did he smile or wave or something? Nah, just looked at us. Then went inside. Now, Thomas 208 to VKC. Requested usuals on a cream citrine. Red Joe Charlie Alpha X ray 846. Hey, hang on a second.
Matos, police, anyone there? Dog! Oh, Hello? Anyone in here? Hello? Excuse me, sir. Do you have any business in here? Vico Center, Mount Thomas 208. Yours is a 74 Citroen sedan cream. Register to a James Dark, 56 Wayland Street, Collingwood. So you're James Dark? Mr. Dark wants to set his next book in a small country town. That's why he's keen to get a feel for the place. Is that why you're trespassing on private property? Sorry if I caused any trouble, but I saw the house from the road and it looked so... Sad, so uh, desolate. It's how he imagines the house in the book. It's going to be a murder mystery. I see. I was asking Constable Parrish about the history of the place. I couldn't tell him much, but I said you'd know. Senior Sergeant Croydon has lived in the area nearly his whole life. So, who used to live there? A bloke named Taz Paisley he died a little while back. Will the house be sold? I don't know. I presume he left it to his wife, but then she might well be dead herself. No one knows. She left him and the town about 25 years ago. And why'd she leave him? Was it another man? Oh, nothing like that. One of their children died. Yeah. That could break up a family. So he's not a wanker? Oh, no, but he's a bit weird. You know, he's kind of withdrawn. Oh, you mean like a...